Hey guys, welcome to what is probably the biggest update we're going to get all year. Slapping around 80 carries, new items, new runes, a few jungle tweaks, loads of champion buffs and nerfs, and a brand new champion with pike releasing in a few days. We're going to start with the key changes I think you really like have to know, I guess, before you go into the game. And then we're going to go into each role properly, but timestamps will be down below. I'm thinking, by the way, with all the AD builds changing uh, tomorrow, I'm going to stalk a lot of pros and see how they are building to give you an idea of what to do. If you think that would help or be cool, leave a comment or a thumbs up on the video to let me know. First things first, we're going to look at towers and also then the inhib and nexus towers the health is kind of changing a little bit so for tower gold there's gonna be more gold to champions around but less across the team it's gonna reward the player who gets it rather than the entire team basically like another one of the changes to make the game a bit more about the individual rather than the team with their inhib and nexus towers they're gonna to be a lower health uh, inhib towers are gonna to regen a bit more though nexus and inhibitor tower health bars are split into thirds now so they can only regen up to the next third the idea is that if you can defend a push you're going to be rewarded a bit more for it now with the regen but attacking a tower can be in stages rather than just like all or nothing with towers also having less health it should be a little bit easier to crack them open if you have a massive lead making it kind of more about like who can get ahead in the early in the mid game rather than sitting back and kind of hiding in your base we've also got tweaks to baron which should probably help that a little bit more as well a lot of people apparently didn't even realize we had massive baron changes a few patches ago to make it a lot more deadly baron is going to be doing less damage now though less attack speed less AOE damage. It's actually been halved and uh, less applications of it as well. Baron was ruining entire teams after these changes. Uh, these should make taking it a little bit easier after a team fight when you're already a little bit low on health. Remember though, it is still a lot more AOE damage focused across the team rather than single target on one of the closest ones. So it will still hurt, just not as much. The new runes are probably going to shake up the meta more than anything else actually, I think. Like, Hellblades can be used on anybody. It's 50 to 100% attack speed for the first three attacks made against an enemy champion you have to attack within one and a half seconds of each to keep it up and there's no cooldown on that except for five seconds out of combat it's really strong for a lot of different champions who want some upfront burst damage when they dive in if you have some kind of synergy with attack speed then it can be a lot better than something uh, like electrocute for example but press attack obviously that is the uh, default choice that is like more consistent damage over a fight at least for an ad carry but halo blades is way more to start a fight i've tried this out on a lot of different people on the pb and it's really good in lane actually so Surprisingly, you get off the three attacks in the time they take to get off one because they have no attack speed yet. It isn't actually that good for team fights, though, really. Like, it can help you get that first person down really fast, but you're almost never going to be spending five seconds out of combat in a team fight to get it back up again. It's almost like a one time use thing. It definitely can work on a lot of different champions, though. It is not just designed for AD carries at all. Even though it is good on AD carries, it can work on a lot of different things. It could be for anybody. We have two more new runes as well. Nimbus Coke is designed for battle mages which nobody ever calls them but they're things like Vlad for example that want to dive in you gain 100 move speed that decays over the next two and a half seconds it's on a 60 second cooldown but actually surprisingly for a rune it is reduced by cooldown reduction this is replacing ultimate hat and sorcery but it is actually a really good rune I've tried this on 80 carries and it's okay the move speed is really nice but if you're not going into sorcery as your primary you have to choose between this gathering storm and celerity and I don't think it's better than those ultimate hunter is going to be in the bottom row of domination though and that is going to be the replacement for ultimate hat it gives five percent cooldown reduction for your ult just like it did before and then two percent per stack and you get a stack each time you take down a unique champion the good side is that if you really wanted the ultimate cooldown reduction you're going to get it you've got your ultimate hat equivalent if you really need it the bad side is you've got to stack this up now in a pretty awkward way, actually. And getting those takedowns is not going to be that easy, honestly, until a bit later into the game. Final thing that you've really got to know is Banner of Command. They've removed the cooldown reduction if you're going to buy it, so it's not as good. A 70% damage reduction from champions now from every champion instead of 100% immunity to magic damage. It's bigger for those who are building it, obviously, because of the stat changes and stuff. But I think you need to know this just because everybody now does 70% less damage to them rather than the magic community. If you don't read the patch notes, and you didn't know this then as a mage you might not waste your mana on spells to do it but actually like mid laners can kill them now uh, with their AP spells so let's go into the roles. Jungle to start with has had a few tweaks to it uh, now after the update last patch. Like Scuttle is going to respawn 15 seconds slower. The Shrine though that it leaves will last 15 seconds longer instead. So really each one of them is going to mean a little bit more. You're going to want to take it because uh, the next one won't be spawning as quickly and the Shrine will last a little bit longer. Jungle camps are also going to give a bit more experience past level 7. Uh, so these are follow-up changes to the ones we had before. Start off the same actually but they end up giving more experience over the game. This should really help junglers through mid-game 
game and help keep them on track experience wise uh, with the rest of the game. Runic Echoes is going to build out Fiendish Codex instead of Lost Chapter, but it gives 20 more ability power now. So 20 more AP is really good. It's like a really good change. This should also spell the end of mid laners abusing it now at the same time. We have no Lost Chapter, no mana regen there, and no real appeal for a mid champ because they really do need the mana back. Moving into some champions then for the jungle, like Graves, the best jungler that we have at the moment. They're toning down his farm speed with less base AD. Uh, his ultimate cooldown is going up 10 seconds rank one, which is something that they originally buffed to make him good in the first place. So it should make him a little bit worse. Kha'Zix is a really big one. These are huge changes for Kha'Zix. His ultimate cooldown has been decreased at later ranks, but the stealth duration has also been decreased. When you evolve it, it's going to grant additional cast and stealth durations of both of those, but there's no longer going to be a part where it grants stealth or move speed in a bush. There is still a reason to evolve if you can use stealth three times, obviously, instead of two, and each lasting two seconds instead of one and a half, but it's still not going to be as good. The perma stealth through the bushes is gone, and that is the biggest part to all of this. I don't think we have to ban him as much anymore. It's not going to be, like, as bad to play against. He's still an assassin, right? He still has a lot of damage. That's good, but he just doesn't have an annoying way to use that now with this perma stealth. Also, using Nimbus Cloak on this guy is absolutely insane. Definitely a buff for him. Uh, that move speed combined with his stealth is ridiculous. Kindred has a little small buff here just because everybody is fighting over Scuttle. They can't get as many marks as easily as they used to. So the mark respawn time has been decreased and the first mark spawns a little bit earlier. With Lee Sin, this is more because of the recent warding totem trinket changes, which means he can't hop around as much as before. We kind of thought that would be a nerf for him anyway, though. Fully benefiting from cooldown reduction means that he should be using them more and get the playmaking from all of that instead of the hopping around, if that makes sense. Xin Zhao is the final change here. The other insane jungler, really, right? But this isn't touching his really strong early game which is why he's so good at the moment they're instead going after his mid game so what he can do with that lead less ad over the game right and the slow is 20 percent worse now as well so it should mean less damage but also he can't glue to them as easily and use that damage anymore support has two minor changes but because ad carrier regen will be worse which we're going to go into in a second our poke supports fighting supports they will be a lot lot better this patch so expect to see a lot more of those so the AD carry changes, the really big ones then. Based that change wise, everything is aimed at fighting more in the bot lane. So regen is much worse, so damage will actually stick, making fighting much better. Less armor, but more health over the game, making more aggressive AD carries be able to all in a little bit more. And less AD early, but more AD over the game, which evens out at level 9, by the way. It makes AD carry autos hurt a little bit less, so they can't chip the opponent down. Those are actually a lot bigger when you put it next to the fleet footwork change. So this is going to give less move speed, less healing on minions, actually more for melee now, but less for ranged. Uh, the AP ratio is up a little bit, 10%, but crits no longer increase the heal amount. This makes laning as an AD much more punishing. So if you mess something up and you take a bad trade, you're going to lose a lot of health that you cannot really get back anymore. You can take this still if you want to as a keystone, but less healing for minions, worse with crit builds. I don't think that is going to be as worth anymore at all. You probably want your pressy attack or something else. Now, the item changes really do look more complicated than they actually are. So I'm going to try and break them down for a little bit. But like, honestly, SSP War has been reworked, right? Stormraiser is new. Crit builds will change. That's kind of what you have to know. Stormraiser is for burst and for kiting. It gives you AD attack speed. And if you haven't attacked for a few seconds, the next one will crit and give move speed. It starts off as not attacked for three seconds, but that goes down with attack speed. And also starts off at 160% damage, which scales up with more crit. Goes up to 200% at 60% crit. It started off as a real new kiting for everybody. It still is kind of, but now to use it properly, you actually need to build more crit and more attack speed. It's also about the move speed burst, so you can kite a little bit better. With some attack speed, that time between attacks is just over a second, so it's not bad at all. It is a really good first item for a lot of different champions now that especially are going to go into crit afterwards. Essence Reaver is like 200 gold cheaper. It's not a crit item anymore. It still has mana regen, but after you cast your ultimate, you get that buff, which gives you some attack speed and reduces your non-ultimate ability cooldowns by 20% each time you attack. It's another ideal first item for champions who want to use abilities a bit more than auto attacks for damage, but they do have a mix. So for example, like Lucian, he autos, but he also uses abilities. Misfortune is less so because he uses abilities a lot, but doesn't really auto much, if that makes sense. This is an insane item, uh, not part of the crit builds anymore really but it does also fit into crit builds later as well if you can use the passive late game it can be really good so crit builds are also more expensive but they actually balance out a little bit more late game as lifesteal items are cheaper we have a storm razor now as an option obviously when the crit build anyway but infinity edge 300 more gold 10 more ad doesn't increase crit damage anymore which is why you don't want to pick it up early but it does double your crit chance and 15 percent of crit damage is converted to true damage you really do not want to build this first item anymore even second it's 
sucks a little bit. But, oh, so the build I've been trying, by the way, was Stormrizer into Shiv into an Infinity Edge. That gives a good amount of damage and crit as well. With the rest of the crit build, Zeal is going to cost 100 gold more, 5% less crit. But the upgrades cost 300 more, except for Phantom Dancer, which is 200 more. Brawler's Gloves are going to be 200 gold more now and unique because Infinity Edge doubles the crit to 20% on them now. And Cloak of Agility has been removed from the game. Last Whisper has been changed. Bonus Arm Pen is now Total Arm Pen. Um, it's going to be a basic version of 10% Total Arm Penetration on that Last Whisper. Lord Dominic's is going to have the AD damage decrease. Bonus Arm Penetration shifted to Total, as we said. And bonus damage against higher health targets has been removed. It's not quite as bad as that sounds, like losing the passive, because more to reminder, the AD damage has been decreased, right? Bonus armor is shifted into total, but the armor penetration is actually 25% instead of Lord Dominic's regards, 35%. So basically, if you want to have the healing reduction passive, you get more to reminder. If you want to go for the raw damage option, you go for Lord Dominic's. The main thing really, though, is you actually do need Last Whisper late game now. People don't build it at the moment, but now you are going to want to. But we can do that because we're building less crit items overall. Most likely, anyway, we're just going to get one attack speed item and an infinity it. Blade and Bloodthirster are 200 gold cheaper and more of Mamortius is going to have the magic resist increase on that. The base shield value increased, but the shield is no longer going to scale with bonus magic resist. So it's kind of just like a reshuffle. Guardian Angel cost has been increased by 400 gold though, which really does actually suck. Uh, armor has been increased by 10, but I don't really think that is a worthwhile trade. Let's jump into the mid lane now. Uh, we're going to start with Shirelius and the fact that I'm putting a support item in the mid section basically says it all for why this is getting a nerf in the first place. It was an amazing item. It's still good, but it costs more and you can't use the active as often. I mean, this was really part of why it was so good because you could get it so fast in a game because it was so cheap and then be ahead in items versus the enemy mid laner. We might see a few less champions picking this up now, but I honestly feel like the ones who really could use it, like a Vlad, still probably would buy it. Minion Dematerializer as well. Uh, the initial delay has been increased. So probably a little bit more for like high-end games, I guess, but Riot thinks it's giving too much wave control early into the game, so you won't be able to use this until four minutes now. This is actually how they tackled the whole stopwatch, like broken era thing, remember, early this season. So it actually does hurt quite a lot when you increase the initial delay. There are two minor changes here to offset some of the mage update. We had a few patches ago, like a Nivea and a Victor as well. Both of these are a lot that big, honestly, but the Victor ones are probably a bit bigger. 40 damage, rank 5 on his Q, even though you don't max it first, so it's not massive. But another 10% on his ultimate is good as well. Might finally actually see a little bit more of him. And I mean, Fleet Footwork got a 10% more AP ratio as well. The final mid thing are Talia changes. These are really weird changes. They are basically here because Talia in Pro Play is too good, but they don't want to make her worse for solo queue. Not sure it's really going to do that, honestly. Uh, I think making her Q single target is awful for trading and pushing, and surely that hurts solo queue players a lot as well. She won't be able to push as hard, right? You can't really roam as easily because of that, and then even when she does, her wall doesn't last as long. I think these are pretty harsh nerfs, honestly. Top lane will probably shift a bit more because of Haler Blades, the new Keystone, and the new Storm Razor item, but we do have one champion change to Urgot. Apparently, this is actually aimed at making jungle Urgot a bit more viable. Obviously, it will help top lane, which is why it's here, but like that is what the damage to monsters is all about. So we might be seeing some uh, jungle ergot, surprisingly, this patch. That was a really big patch. I tried to break it down for you guys as much as possible, but that wraps it up. Uh, it was massive. Hopefully, it all makes sense, honestly. But thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.